babble a little bit. Cool, cool. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you very much for joining us today. We're really happy about it and super happy that we have KJ with us today as well. So, so we, um, you know, I, I already said we've got some returning people, which is always fabulous. You know, we got some new people. I was expecting a few more new people, but they may join us in a little bit because I know sometimes it's hard to get into our meetup right at uh, five things happen. So, you know, our mission and vision re it remains the same. We're really, really all around community and learning and sharing all that we know. And I love the fact that that people, when they join our group or want to join our group, actually say, you know, I want to mentor, I want to share, I want to learn. So really appreciate that. So perspectives and knowledge and our experiences are are so helpful and, and actually critical for us to advance, you know, um, our own personal journeys with agility, as well as, you know, any number of other things, whether it's family or whatever, it always comes in helpful. So I wanted to just say too that, you know, our, our standard group of people, um, Julie Rue and Chris Wickett, and Chris is at a different meeting right now, so can join us, and Cheryl with C Prime, Craig, who's, um, I'm trying to think Optum and, and also Turnberry, um, Angela Agresto, Marilyn, um, and then our, our women in Agile partner, Sharon. Um, they're all still part of our group. I am always, I also, bleh, I want to share as well. And I'm so glad that that was on recording that I was like flubbering. But, um, <laughs> you know, we've got Amy Sinha and Vladimir Bushin and Sabrina, who are all part of last yeah. month. Um, they are actually joining our little organizing team. So uh, the last planning meeting, which of course I didn't attend, which is why I thought it was like fabulous because there were so many ideas generated. Really happy about that. So it doesn't mean that anyone else who wants to join us or help even on a part-time basis uh, should, don't be deterred by that. So, you know, any ideas that you have, any time that you have available, would be fabulous. We um, enjoy ideas and, and the camaraderie that comes with working on setting up an event and executing that event for all of you. So feel free. I just want to toss out a couple things next month, January 19th, I think it is. We I think we're getting back to the third Thursday of the month, which was where we were before like all this holiday stuff has been happening. So third Thursday of the month, we'll have Ann Steiner from C Prime sharing about that um, move from project to product. Um, so look for that meetup soon. I know that Cheryl Anderson is putting that together. So um, she'll be publishing. And then in February, we're gonna have Paul Kramer. Paul Kramer is someone from Improving. He's been with a number of different organizations and he's going to talk about his book, which is called Burnt Peanut Butter Toast, for those of you that may or may not have heard of that. So look for that in the meetup announcement. And as part of that, um, we'll be we'll be doing a book giveaway and a digital book giveaway giveaway that hopefully goes better than last month's digital book giveaway, which was a nightmare. But um Today we have KJ, and he um, is here to, to share his thoughts, what, what brought him to writing this article on Agility Map, and um, hopefully all of you have had an opportunity to, to take a quick read of it, that you have questions, and we can have a, a nice discussion about it. I had met um, KJ, probably I met him in person at other Twin Cities meetups, but definitely connected with him um, last April when he did a talk about agility map with uh, BAM team the um, from the Twin Cities. So that was really interesting. And as a result, I'm like, mm, I wonder if he'd share this with all of us. So, you know, he's, he's, a, he's um, very experienced. He really helps organizations kind of rediscover their vision and gain competitive advantages. He was here in the Twin Cities working at a variety of different um, companies for quite a while and um, then moved to Texas where he could be warm and where his son could miss the snow for snowboarding. So he's held a lot of roles. And, you know, that's one of the things is that is all those different perspectives and all those different roles that really um, provide uh, you know, depth and breadth of experience that's awesome.
to share with us. So super glad that we have KJ with us this evening, and I guess we can just jump right into it. All right. That sounds good. Well, thanks, Cheryl, for inviting me. I think it's great to be able to share some of my thoughts on this topic. And also, you know, I look forward to to hear your thoughts, uh, some feedback, some suggestions on, on this topic. Uh, let me share my screen so you can see it. Um, and Cheryl, can you maybe also paste the link to this? mural board to to the audience so because i i want to make this a little bit more interactive so if oh well, by the yeah. way does everybody did, did everybody use mural before did you need some kind of intro on how to use it it's pretty straightforward okay i will assume most people will manage <laughs> on that so um so today i just want to spend some time sort of make an introduction to a tool that I developed called a Julie map, like Cheryl mentioned that I, I wrote about it and put it on LinkedIn. Um, uh, Valerie, thanks for, for reading it ahead of time so that uh, we can probably move a little bit faster on some of the areas. So, uh, so I wanted to, if you look at the right hand side, just want to maybe for the intro, want to do, you know, follow the, these topics, what, why do we need another tool, right? I think most of us that are on this call are either playing the agile coach role or, or a product owner, product manager role, some kind of agile role in your organization, either as employee or as a consultant. I, I assume many of you um, were frustrated at some point in your agile endeavor, trying to explain to people what agile really is, right? Um, you will go to organization, will, they will say, yeah, we're agile, we have scrum teams. And you're trying to explain, yes, but it's more than that. Right? Uh, so try to understand what agile is and what agile is not. Uh, is one of the biggest challenges uh, that I was facing uh, in, the, in the earlier years. I still do, but, um, but I think by sort of thinking in this framework or, or, or this frame of reference, it helps me to understand where they are. Because the so over the years, what I have developed in terms of my understanding of what agile is or what agility, what agility is, is at the end of the day, it's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. It's more of what makes sense to your client in their reality, right? Uh, of course, we can all picture the perfect agile organization that everybody is trying to do, but but very rarely do we actually see that happen. So so where they are is actually very important to to understand and being able to guide them from where they are to the next step to the next step in their agile journey. As we're doing this, um, I found sometimes things could get sporadic or or ad hoc. Right. How do we approach this agility improvement more systematically, more more scientific, so to speak? Right. Uh, so, so that sort of was the starting point of me trying to say, okay, we need a tool that is simple to use. It's not complex, and it can be used in many different ways to many different people. The coaches can use it for self-assessment. The, you can, we can use it at the team level, at the org level, at the enterprise level, things like that. And, and it is um, more of a big picture. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, uh, things like that. So after some thinking, I developed this tool called called Agility Map. So what I'm going to do is try to first try to talk about the, the four quadrants, as you can see here. Uh, what they mean, the different colors, what they mean, and, and I will talk about the two principles and, you know, possible usages of it, right? So AJ, if we I'm, zoom into this. KJ, yeah, I'm going to go ahead. ahead and share my screen so that the um, the mural board sure. is recorded. Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Do you need me to stop sharing? Or did I share? No, I didn't. Okay. No, did not share. There you go. All right. Thanks, Cheryl. 
Yeah, you, you can you can watch Sheriff's screen or you can just follow me on the mirror board um, to, to see what I'm looking at. Either way would work. So so I basically sort of holding different systems, frameworks, different elements in, in those frameworks um, and sort of put this tool together. So the axes, right, horizontally, this is borrowed from uh, the integral model by Ken Welber. Some of you may be familiar with that more of horizontal on the left side, it's more of an internal uh, aspect of things and the right hand side is more external. And then the uh, upper part of it is more individual. And then the bottom part of it is more macro. Uh, more holistic, right? And I chose to put team up here instead of individual because um, I believe agile is a team sport, right? Uh, kind of like the, the smallest unit of, of an agile practice is a team. It could be just a two person team, but it's, it's still a team. The team dynamics, the synergy among the team members uh, is actually very important. So, so that's how I put it. So internal, external, um, team and enterprise. So with this quadrant, uh, I broke the agility landscape into four parts, right? On the top left, so this is more team level, more internal. So I call, I call it agile mechanics. So that, that will be things like pair programming, backlog, um, stand-ups, all the scrum ceremonies, um, things like that. So it's team-oriented, it's individual-oriented practices that are more internally significant, right? So it's like your scrum and extreme programming practices put together? Yeah. The, the, those practices, right? Uh, okay. Those are things that we do. You know, um, I, I, you would sort of summarize this as doing agile. Anything you could label as we're doing agile, you can put it in this quadrant. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Good. I'm sorry to disturb. Oh no, no worries. Feel free to to to, to ask questions. That's totally fine. I want this to be more interactive anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the the reason why I was trying to pitch in was. Uh, the article, mm -hmm. the link, I think that was like, um, I don't know if it's just me. Uh, it said it, it was written three years before. Yeah, it was written three years ago. Okay. And yeah, uh, I think it's 20, 2019 is when, when I wrote it. Okay. I've been using it uh, sort of just to test it out uh, over, over the years. Uh, I haven't made a whole lot of upgrades to it yet, uh, but maybe you guys can help me to to, to, to make it better. So that, uh, that monthly release still continues. Oh, the monthly release. That's an example of how to use the agility map, not the releases of the agility map itself. Ah, okay, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we should make that more clear so that uh, there's no such confusion on that. So uh, getting back to, to what this is, right? So this is Agile Mechanics doing Agile and still add more of the individual level or team level, but if it's external, this is where I put product agility, right? Uh, sure, you mentioned BAM, the the bis, um, business agility. Uh, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. But product agility is, is about um, how we can satisfy customers' needs. How can we satisfy their changing needs, right? Things like uh, releasing products, uh, more frequently, really be customer centric, uh, that sort of thing uh, is on um, product agility side of things. And then down here, down on the lower right, this is external and enterprise wide, right? This is not just one product. Maybe a company will have many products. Maybe they have different business goals, business agility goals. Uh, so this is where we want to go. Okay, we, we, we say, okay, what's the value of anything that we do? Ideally, it should all point to somewhere in the business agility uh, quadrant or some items in there, right? Uh, things like increasing uh, your market share or really having an impact 
on people or disrupt the market or, or things like that. So it, it's about more macro, but it's external facing, it's value driven, uh, things like that. And then on the lower left, that's internal, but it's enterprise wide. So I call it organizational agility, right? Uh, you can see it as um, a company's ability to organize and reorganize based on changing needs with minimum impact, right? I think we probably are all uh, have experienced constant reorgs of different companies and it's disruptive, people are confused and things like that. A company's ability to do that and without all those uh, interruptions uh, will be a company that has higher uh, agility. And I'll talk more about it as I'm talking about the, the colors on that. So those are the four quadrants. And, and then the, another one I wanna point out is the organizational agility is actually the foundation of a lot of the agile mechanics, right? Yeah, the a question. Yeah, go okay. ahead. Yes, hi, this is Amy Sinha. So I really appreciate this. Uh, it sounds, uh, I mean, I just love the transparency that you're able to bring in one screen itself. So that's uh, extremely helpful, especially for really large organizations like uh, the one that I'm part of. Now, to me as a coach, this does sound like an excellent tool for Kanban as well, because it does make work visible. But at, at the same time, you have all these elements of scaled agile, which is business agility and, you know, uh, an overall uh, view of uh, different products and all that. So would you agree that we could potentially use this for both uh, you know, organizations that work in a Kanban fashion and those that work in a more yeah. uh, traditional Scrum fashion? Yeah, absolutely. I would say so this, tool, yeah. this tool is agile flavor agnostic. It, it really doesn't yeah. matter. I love the way uh, you yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're using Scrum or any kind of scale framework or Kanban or a mixture of many different things, right? At the, at the end of the day, it's not about what we do. It's about the level of agility that we can achieve. And this is what this tool is trying to, to help is to say, okay, based on what we're doing, let's put mm -hmm. our items on this map and see where they are, right? Exactly. Uh, what kind of agility is given us uh, being able to visualize it. And then... I just wanted to make a quick comment. Um, yeah. I don't know who was that was talking. Um, who was that was talking? And that was Amy. Amy Sinha. Hi, hi, hi Amy. Hi. Yes, hi. hi. I'm Val. I just wanted to, to piggyback and say, yeah. typically what happens, I, I just had a call today um, someone was interested in, in um, letting me come help with their organization. And um, the first thing they said is they had just, this is just a recruiter, not the organization, but he said they had just let a scrum master go because they had not um, scheduled, hear me on this, they had not scheduled stand up. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so this is, a, I can't make this stuff up. What, what I loved about your article, KJ, is that what I love about your tool, and I, I think we can never have too many tools. I, 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 I do a workshop, Scrum Master's Toolkit, is that we want to jump to doing Agile before people have an understanding of what it is, and to your point, I, my recipe is get the whole story. Where are they? What magic wand do they think they're gonna is gonna happen by them bringing us on to help them? What what's gonna happen in six months after I've been here for six months, and what does your organization look like? But Amy, I liked your question because typically we think the agile mechanics are separate from the product and the business, right? Yes. And really, really the business agility, what is the vision? What are we driving? What a product, what are we trying to do? So we want to get to market faster. I think the um, example, KJ, that you had in your article was this group, this was uh, this group, this, the agile culture was working with a group 
And they came up with the goal that they wanted to have 21% of the market share. Mm. That's something specific. Now, all the other things we do are going to be supporting that. And what are the products that are going to get us there? That's the product agility. And maybe we might not be ready for the organizational, but we probably want to look at that. But at least now the mechanics make sense, right? right. How are things go? So I think typically as coaches, what we're challenged with is getting the organizations to understand that the t- you don't just start at the team level, right? What's going on in the other parts of the world? Mm-hmm. That's what I like about it because it makes, uh-huh. when you're first introducing Agile and even people who've been in a long time, you're making yeah. them think about all four parts, not just the mm-hmm. can. I love that. Yeah, exactly Absolutely. Well. And just to add to uh, add to that, Val, I think this makes uh, the gaps visible, because when you go into an organization and you want to coach, or even if you you know you're an employee like myself, you know, at constantly we are faced with gaps, right? So I love the fact that you can see um, uh, you know the gaps in one uh, three sixty degree view. I think that's very helpful. Thank you. Sorry, yeah. I stopped. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like handsome. Yeah, it is very handsome. <laughs> <laughs> One-stop well, shopping. Yeah, th- th- thanks for the comments. Th- th- that's exactly uh, what the intention is, is to use this to help start a conversation, right? I'm not trying to judge or say, see where you are. Just place your items on here. Let's agree that this is where we are. Uh, no judging, but let's figure out where we want to be next. So that will help, from a coaching perspective, the conversation itself more constructive. Right. It's not about convincing. It's not about year round and yeah. right, things like that. It's about let, let's just figure it out together. But here yeah. is just a map we can use to help us to 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 pinpoint and, and visualize uh, a number of different things. Right. So uh, moving on to so you can almost look at this. You know, as a map, you need a way to put coordinates coordinates and, and things like that. And then what I just talked about is basically that, right? And you can also see this as more of a three-dimensional map. And the third dimension is the the, the colors, right? Uh, talking about the colors, uh, for those of you who have read the book, Reinventing Organizations by Frederick uh, Lalox, if I maybe butchering his last name. So if you look it up, Reinventing Organizations, uh, you will find these colors are very similar. I'm act- actually borrowed a subset of the organizational development colors that that he had described in his book. Basically, this if you want to go even deeper, those color represent different stages of organizational development. Um, and behind that is a. Uh, 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 a system or, or a theory called um, uh, spiral dynamic, dynamics. I don't know if some of you might have heard of that. Spiral dynamics by uh, Claire Graves and Dunbeck. So, th- but that is more individual and collectively. And Frederick sort of distilled that idea and used similar color approach, warm color, cold color, that sort of thing, uh, to really. Uh, trying to depict the different stages, not human uh, cognitive development, but organizational development, right? So I borrowed a subset of that to say, okay, uh, the colors, they mean the different types or organizations or or different stages uh, in terms of organizational development, right? Hey, Jay, may I I interrupt? I'm sorry? May I interrupt for a quick question? Oh, yeah, sure, go ahead. So um, in agile mechanics, I think um, um, we are also, uh, I mean, what the picture states in agile mechanics, we have scaling frameworks um, like less, as well yeah. as, um, you know, save. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The, yeah. So, mm-hmm. so if we look at scaled agile, um, the uh, seven competencies and the 21 dimensions and the mm-hmm. the uh, maturity assessment, mm-hmm. it has its own uh, way of 
you know, maturing uh, or measuring the maturity of how the um, dimensions are or how the competencies are, uh, you know, being implemented mm -hmm. in an enterprise, right? And um, so it has its, and how do we take the outcomes of that? Um, the reason why I'm asking is business mm -hmm. agility, organizational agility, organizational agility, it's like, you know, I have um, a, a, an agile release train, which uh, is in place that was originally, um, you know, kind of like is put together by um, doing a value stream mapping. And whenever there is a change, my value stream mapping is going to change and my I'm just going to restructure my agile release train. So um, the point is your agile mechanics seem to already contain um, all the elements that is required uh, to measure the maturity of an enterprise, uh, especially with those scaling frameworks. Uh, so the other three quadrants, um, I, I'm, the point that I'm missing here is the other three quadrant and the maturity of the, uh, the other three quadrant, it's already taken care in the, the first quadrant uh, when you do a maturity assessment with those scaling frameworks. Uh, so the other three quadrants, um, are they any distinct um, from what those maturity assessment uh, that are implemented um, in a in a scaled agile framework are less. Uh, does my question make sense? Yeah, it, it, it could. I, I I just while I was thinking through this, I did not make a conscious connection between this and the the agile scale framework maturity. But th there could be some overlap or some connections Fair we enough. can make. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, your sure. KJ, I mean, you did uh -huh. mention this is uh, agnostic of any type of uh, framework, right? So, right. which is why you didn't factor it in. Now, if I if I work within a scaled agile framework construct and I actually teach for the scaled agile framework, I may use it differently than somebody else who is working with. It. So, I, I understand what mm -hmm. you're trying. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I actually, uh, in a few minutes, I wanted to to have Dave share some of his experience. Uh, after I, I talked through the colors and stuff. Uh, we didn't yeah. let you get through the colors. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, exactly. I, I think <laughs> what I like, or at least I, what I want this tool to do is it's not a very rigid, you can only use it this way. It's like, okay, it's a very yeah. simple tool. Once you understand it, you can use it in many creative ways. However, it can help you, right? Either it's a conversation or either it's a teaching situation, brainstorming, a workshop. Um, just put it in your toolbox and put it out when, when you feel that it's, it's going to be useful in that situation, right? Um, okay, <laughs> back to the colors. Um, so, so just very quickly in the center, uh, it's called amber, right? The amber color. What it means is it represents more of a command and control organization. Uh, so the the characteristic of that is where following the order is more important than getting things done. Right. So a, a, a example of that is like an army. Right. You can't go jump the chain of command. You need to follow the order. As long as you're following the order, uh, that's the most important thing. So, so that's in the center um, of this map to say, okay, we might still have government organizations or, or armies or other organizations that, that are like that, right? Uh, number one priority is the hierarchy is respected. So that's one. And the one outside of that is orange. What that is, the, the, the gist of it is this is uh, the type of company that is resolved and ego driven, right? We want to achieve something. We want to make more money. We want to beat the competition and we want to be better than anybody else, right? Uh, there will still be hierarchy. There will still be rules, but the doers or the people who's responsible for certain areas in, in this kind of organization have some flexibility on how they want to do it as long as they deliver the results, right? Uh, this is where companies talk a lot about 
cost cutting, maximize the utilization, uh, things like that. So a metaphor for this kind of company is well-oiled machine, right? You, we, all, we all have heard of this. This is a well-oiled machine. It runs perfectly and everybody sort of that are part of the machine is just a cog. They're replaceable. They need to be trained. The machine needs to be designed well and things like that. In fact, this is where most of corporate America is, right? Uh, it's a well-oiled machine, at least that's the goal. Now, if we go out that one more layer, we hit the green. Uh, this is where beyond delivering results, the empowerment, the participation, the collective wisdom is being valued more now, right? Having a purpose, it's not just money. We want to be able to have an impact in society or the environment or things like that. We want to make sure everybody's voice is heard and um, um, everybody has a say into things. At least, at, at least they want to be inclusive, right? We want, we want to include their voice. Um, and the metaphor for green color companies will be like a family, right? We still have a father, a mother, and siblings, but overall, we're all in this together. Yeah, it's more consensus-based. Our relationship is important. We're a big, happy family, right? That, that, that is sort of the metaphor for, for this type of organization. And if you look at a lot of the agile practices or agile ideas, they actually are in the screen circle. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And then further out is a color called Teal. That's an emergent type of company. Um, I don't know if you guys heard of um, the term holacracy. Uh, so this is a, a way of saying this is the company that doesn't have hierarchies. It's uh, radically transparent. And there's no leaders, no doers. Everybody is both a leader and a doer at the same time. You get to decide what you do as long as you don't hurt the company or you don't hurt other people in the company, right? Um, a metaphor for this type of company is uh, like an ecosystem. It's governed by a set of natural rules, but also those rules, you're free to do whatever you want to do. This is not a focus of this tool, but I want to just call, call that out there just a, as a context, right? So as we're talking about Agile, we're talking about moving companies from orange to green, basically, using, using this lens to look at it, right? Um, the one thing I want to mention is orange is not necessarily worse than green, or amber, uh, or orange is not necessarily better than amber. It all has something to do with the bigger environment a company is in, right? So for example, if we find ourselves in a crisis situation, a disaster happened, something happened. So that way order is more important than creativity. We need to get people safe, in a safe place first, get them fed and things like that. That way, in that situation, Amber is actually a very effective way of getting things done, much more effective than in a green company where the whole family needs to sit together and figure out what to do and have consensus, right? But for a lot of the environment that we are in, it's not like that. It's more about how to uh, outmaneuver our competitors, how to be able to um, out iterate our competitors and things like that, how to satisfy our customers better than our competitors. And that's where the green type of company is very strong in that, right? It gets the feedback and things like that. So, so th those are the different colors. And I wanna talk quickly about the two principles of this, this tool. So as we're looking at it, as we're saying, okay, we're putting, uh, what we're putting different items on here, um, how should we generate insight out of it, right? What would, what would be something that we wanna get out of it? And what kind of rule should we follow to say, okay, this doesn't look right uh, and we need to change it, right? So those are the two principles. So principle number one is sustainable agility is achieved 
by balanced advancements in all four quadrants. I think uh, Valerie and, and Amy, you guys touched it earlier, is it's not just doing one thing, it's about if, let's say, our product mm -hmm. agility goal is in orange, and we're trying to implement green agile practices, then they don't match, right? right. So, so, so they're not, the, 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 they're not really helping each other. Uh, and let's say if we're all focusing on agile mechanics, we don't talk about product agility, business agility. Valerie, you alluded to that earlier. And we don't have the organizational agility to really support that. Then you can do all the agile practice all you want, but you're not you're not going to get the results you want. It's going to be lim the results are going to be limited and temporary. Right. One of the frustration that I had or challenge I had when I was um, er in the earlier years about coaching is I have to put a lot of pressure in the organization to do the agile practices. But as soon as I release the pressure, let them go do it, very quickly the, they go back to doing what they were doing before. That's because the other quadrants are not supporting this agile practice. Exactly. Right? So, so this is principle number one is you wanna be able to, if you wanna move from orange to green, you want to move at all four quadrants. You can't just move one and leave all the other ones in orange. At least you want to consider that, right? And the second uh, principle is items in the same color synergize well. I kind of touched on that earlier. Let's say if you have a very orange business agility goal, but you're trying to look at releasing products more often, which will imply it could be more expensive, right? But if your business agility goal is to save money to cut costs, releasing your products monthly is not, they're not compatible, right? right. Um, and I use the, you know, the agile mechanics having incompatible uh, product agility example earlier. So, so you want to be able to look at one thing and say, okay, if we were to make it happen, they need to be at least very close to the same color circle in order for those to synergize. If they're not, we don't want to anticipate or expect if we're going to get great results because we're probably not going to do that. So those are the two principles. One, we want to expand out in an imbalance on all four quadrants. And two, uh, we want to be we want to make sure items uh, in different quadrants if we want to set expectations, they need to be in the same color circle in order to work well, in order to have synergies, right? Um, so those, those are I different colors. A, sorry. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, Just one um, question there. So um, with, with, the, with the second uh, point, KJ, uh, that was mm -hmm. a wonderful one. Um, so, but, um, I, I'm, I just want to make sure I got it right. So mm -hmm. more uh, frequent deployment to production as a um, adverse um, value on the business agility, is that, is that correct? Or is it the other way around? Can you say that again? I don't, I'm not sure um, if I fully understand it. So, I uh, more frequent deployment or more frequently, I want to take the code more frequently to production. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, but I see that it doesn't add a business value. Um, is that is that is it what it is, or do you want to you know kind of like release the yeah. code only based on your business value? Yeah, it, it is releasing products more often does not speak to a business value that you can identify then that begs the question, why? Why do we want to release off? Right? If it doesn't give us business value, then why are we doing it? Right? There may be legitimate reason, but at least that will give us a chance to pause and ask the question and make sure everybody is understanding it the same way, right? And, and it's also in, in this releasing to production versus releasing to a production-like environment, like not exposing it, like hidden behind a toggle, Releasing to production, but not releasing it to the customer. You see the difference there? Yes. That, that is, 
uh, how do you say it? Um, releasing to production whether or not it is seen by a customer increases value because it decreases risk, right? There's right. there is yeah. no yeah. downside to releasing super super frequently if you get good at it. But the the customer thing is totally on the business. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to spend a minute talk very quickly about how you can use the agility map. I think I talked about it a little bit earlier, right? So as an agile coach or agile practitioner, you could use it just to do an assessment of, of the teams or organization you're in right now, just to say, here's what I have observed and throw them on this map and say, okay, this is the current state, right? Uh, or you can use this map or the different elements of the map to help you design your state of agile uh, assessment to say, okay, maybe my previous assessment is very heavy on agile mechanics. Maybe I want to add a little bit more product agility, business agility um, topics into my assessment to be able to do that. Right. Once you collect the assessment, then you can map it out on this map. That will give you a very good visual about where this company or organization is at. And then from there, you can say, okay, what needs to happen next? Right. Then you're using the two principles to say, oh, these two don't really uh, have synergy. We need to do we need to do something about it. Then that gives you a way of sort of mapping it out, uh, things like that. And you can do it at, like I said earlier, you can do it at a team level, at a business line level, or even at an enterprise level, depending on what your role is, right? And again, this is not a be all. Uh, it will solve all your problem, but it's just a tool for you to say, okay, I want to be able to uh, make sense in my head, but I also want to maybe possibly use this to show the people that I I want to communicate this with, right? And maybe a visualized way is a little bit easier to communicate, right? So so th th those are different ways that you could use it. Um, but, but with that, um, I invited Dave to this call because he was actually in uh, my previous talk back in April. After that, he actually implemented this or at least used it uh, in his organization. Uh, so I, I would like to see if Dave, you, you can maybe share a couple of highlights in, in your uh, journey of using this, uh, some, some learnings or something you wanna, you wanna share with the group here. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks, KJ, for inviting me to this. Um, yeah, again, I learned about this back in April at the BAM meetup, and it was just perfect timing for, for my organization. Um, I'm an Agile coach within uh, in the company I work for, and my whole uh, Agile coaching team, uh, kind of where we were at at the point at around the April time frame was, you know, where are we at as an organization with our Agile journey? Um, and what are the top things that we should be focusing on? So that's how we used this um, uh, agility map approach was to look at our entire organization, not just one team or maybe a product line, but was for the entire enterprise. Um, and then again, we we went through kind of the activities to to figure out where we were. So I think I think what I can do here is talk through the steps that we took to to fill this out from an enterprise perspective, and then kind of where we landed, and then some of our key takeaways. And then happy to answer any questions as well. So the first thing that we had was we had a major gap where we didn't have really our ad, agile principles figured out. So we, we went back to the agile manifesto and we amended it so that it was more inclusive to everyone in our organization. So agile manifesto has a lot of software language in there. Uh, we wanted to do this across the entire enterprise, not just for software development. Um, so we amended that to make it again, more, more inclusive uh, to all, all employees within the company. Um, once we had that done, then we used those 12 Agile principles that we amended, and then we used those as inputs into the Agility Map. And so from there, um, you know, this was a group of Agile coaches, so obviously lots of opinions and, and thoughts around where things are at. So we used a bit of a kind of a democratic uh, process to get through it. So we did a lot of voting on where we all thought the different principles landed on this Agility Map. So you know, which, which color did it land on, which um, uh, integral, and then which um, uh, development, development stage or agility quadrant. So we voted on all those and we got those on our, on our map and we did this from an enterprise view, right? So some areas may be ahead of others or some may be behind others. That was okay. We just generally said, here's what we think we are. 
Uh, we also got some input from the CEO of the company uh, in terms of what he believed his business agility goal was for, for the enterprise. So once we had both of those things done and we, we placed the business agility goal in that business agility, um, uh, agility quadrant, we were then able to say, okay, out of these 12 principles, what's the top one that we need to focus on as an organization uh, to move that business agility goal forward? So we figured that piece out, uh, had a bunch of conversations around that. Um, and then from there, we said, okay, we got our top principle. We've got our business agility goal from the CEO. We've got that mapped on here. And from there, we said, what are our top issues that we have in each one of these uh, agility quadrants that we believe we need to move forward to move our agile principle forward? And so what we did is we voted. We threw a whole bunch of sticky notes on the board in each one of these um, stages. Um, I'm sorry, agility quadrants. And then we voted on the top ones in each one of those. And then we um, figured out which, which one of the colors that it belonged into. And then, then from there we said, okay, are there, um, is there an amber or an orange or a green grouping of um, basically post-it notes that we wanna try to move collectively together across this board. And so we got, we, we basically voted on one business agility um, item one product agility, agile mechanic, and organizational agility item. They're all in the same color. They're all tied to the um, top agile principle that we believe would move for our business agility goal forward. So that was really the end result of our map is we had, here's what we need to do to move the organization forward with agility. Um, so at this point where we are now is, okay, so how are we gonna do this? Uh, how do we get this out to the different teams so they can kind of see this, maybe figure out, you know, what their individual issues are so they can contribute to this map? Uh, how do we get this in front of senior leaders um, at the enterprise level? How do we get this in front of maybe some mid-level mid leaders, get this at their level so they can kind of do maybe their own internal mappings and, and see how they can help to move this forward. So that's where we're at right now as a team is figuring out how to, how to really socialize this and get this spread out across across the organization. Uh, I would say it took us probably from April, well, it was probably May when I presented this and we, we decided to do this as a team until um, last month to really get this whole thing mapped out. So it took a lot of conversations for us to get there. Um, and I skipped over the reason that we chose this approach, <laughs> should have said this right away, uh, was that it was very simple. So it was a well-rounded approach. It seemed to connect to everybody. We had all tried different things, um, but this was just really kind of easy to look at. And like we've all been talking here, had the four different quadrants. It was very easy to look at and we could kind of just jump in and start using it. So that was the reason we, we decided to go with this approach. So again, I thank uh, KJ for bringing this forward. Um, the, other, the other benefit that this brought forward to our team was not only identifying some of those top improvement items, but it brought us together as a team as well. Um, that really wasn't something we came in trying to achieve, but um, we we're actually a, a closer um, working agile coaching team now going forward, which is which is really cool. Um, let's see. I think the other thing that this brought forward too is agile. A lot of times just focuses on IT or software development. Um, this really allowed us to go forward and say, hey, here's the things outside of even IT that we need to focus on um, and get get the word out and the messaging out outside of just our IT areas. So that was a, one of the other benefits. Awesome. So Dave, your team, I hear you reference your team and I thought I heard you say um, it's a group of agile coaches for your organization. Correct. Correct. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we'd all been for the, you know, we'd all been with the company for many years. I've been with the company for nine, but some of us have been with the company for, you know, 30 plus. So we just have lots and lots of knowledge. So it was very cool just to get that all onto this map here and say, okay, here's what we think we are and have that alignment as a group, which was, is not easy to do with a group of agile coaches. So, so that was, that was pretty neat. I don't, I don't think alignment is easy with any uh, group, oh, family, anybody. Yeah, so, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. So what I think is amazing about this is if it is that you guys got to see what you're actually asking the organization to do, right? The thinking, like look at how much work it took to get alignment, even having a, a map to kind of guide you. 
It's just, it, I think that's, that's really amazing. And of course you're closer because what? You're spending time together and you're building those relationships. Yeah. Absolutely. I like the approach that um, you picked up. You decided to pick one out of the 12 principles and as yeah. a came together and say, let's implement all that will take to uh, be truly, hey, we are matured with this principle. So like that approach of you take one at a time, implement it, and um, also like, I know, uh, taking those things like the highest prior priority items first and then moving on to the next one. I think that approach is really awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that too. You're right, Raj. Yeah, this is great, Dave. Thanks for sharing that. And then uh, I guess one thing that uh, surprised me a little bit uh, when I heard you sharing your experience was you work with a group of coaches, right? Uh, we would assume coaches, they all understand Agile pretty well. Uh, <laughs> they have very similar views on things. And, and yet it took a group of coaches several months to reach an agreement or or some kind of common understanding of where we are, so 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 that 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 was a, was a very good uh, a good point to say. Just because we're saying the same thing doesn't mean we mean the same thing, right? right. And, and you use a tool like this to say, then you can pinpoint it and say, okay, is this what you actually mean? I remember when. They, when we were doing the exercise of moving agile principles to, to this map, uh, we didn't totally agree on some of those items, which quadrant they should be, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I, I think the, um, the, the value is not having the right answer because different people might have different interpretation. The value is through the disagreement on where it should, you're getting closer. Right. If if it takes more than one conversations, then now people are really sort of using the same language the same way, using the same sort of frame of reference. That will help clear a lot of things in 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 the conversations or, or work going forward. Right. So, um, does anybody have any other questions for for Dave? I think that was a perfect example of. Uh... Servant leader for servant leader. I really like the way he narrated it. Totally. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah really great, job, great job. Great yeah. job. Thank you. Yeah, I look forward to, to hearing more from you on, on what happened afterwards. Yeah, I'm happy to join up, you know, going into the next year to see, you know, where we're at next. So, yeah, happy to share more as we keep going. Yeah, so let's we're see how you... Yeah, we're also planning on redoing journey. this at least every six months, maybe a year, kind of going back and reassessing uh, the map mm -hmm. and you know, making adjustments as needed, so. Do, do you mind awesome. if I ask a question? Oh, no, go, go, ahead. go ahead. So uh, you, you mentioned different uh, types of organizations before, and, and you mentioned the one of types of organization is more of an ecosystem, right? You remember uh, that? Ecosystem. Yeah, Eco yeah, 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 ecosystem. Your... Sorry, oh, my no. accent, I apologize no. for that. Sorry, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> I'm wondering if you have an example of organization like that. Um, there are actually many examples in that book, Reinventing Organizations. Uh, there aren't that many. And I think there are a few in Europe. One of the examples that they had was uh, there's this uh, nursing organization where the nurses in Europe, they go out to, to the houses or apartments of different patients and they, by using this teal model, they actually became the most successful company in that industry. It's basically wow. each nurse organization, they self-organize and they figure out what's the best way to serve their, their patients. And then they use their overall company intranet to share that information as, hey, this worked for us. If you want, you can try it, right? And, and the, the, the company management didn't tell them what to do and they just figured it out. And different countries in Europe or different areas, they had different um, 
uh, different ways of doing things or, or, or different traditions and things like that. So, so it, it was basically each of those locations is their own small cell, if you will, and, and then they adapt based on their environment, right? Um, there is another uh, not so successful or perfect example in the United States is the uh, the shoe online shoe company called Zappos. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard of that. They were solid green in terms of their company culture and their practices and things like that. And it's not just IT, it's how, how they do it. And, and, you know, their late CEO wanted to move them from green to teal um, about, I think he's calling it um, radical transparency. So one example is the CEO's calendar is open to everybody, right? Everybody can see what the CEO is doing. And then the title of CEO is only external. Internally, it's just one person that has certain responsibilities. Uh, so the hierarchy is not there. Um, so so I would, if you're interested, I would encourage you to, go, uh, to, to grab that book. They have some very interesting examples of company that have achieved that. Uh, but again, yes. it has a lot to do with the environment, the company culture, the readiness of the employees and things like that. Sounds like there are two examples from the book, right? No, no, there, there are probably six, seven examples. I just don't remember all of them. Okay, well, those two that you mentioned are from the book. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bill, that Bill goes, actually that put an book. example in. Bill um, yeah, called actually, out the, I just gave you the, I, I put in the chat, KJ, the yeah. uh, Pertz or well, I put in the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, reinventing organizations link. Yeah, KJ oh, is talking right. about it's a it's a great book. I entirely, <laughs> entirely really recommend good. it. I personally yeah, prefer. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I I appreciate. Yeah, I, I threw the I threw the image into the chat as well of showing. Bill, I thought that this is a virtual background that you have. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, uh, no, it's all of a sudden you pu you pull a book out of your virtual background. That's very strange. <laughs> Funny, or one person actually asked me at one time, and I reached up and I grabbed this thing and I put it back, and he goes, "That's amazing!" And I'm like, "No, oh, dude, it's bookshop. How do you do this?" <laughs> yeah, I think Zappos too, with Tony Shui and the way that he um, uh -huh. built that organization is really cool. I mean, if you guys can ever do it, if you're ever in Vegas and you want to do a cool tour, I would say try to try to check out Zappos. And uh, I got their little anniversary book when I went last uh, October. Oh, nice! It's just such an amazing company. Yep. All the things that Zapponians do. And, and believe me, you know, from a customer service perspective, you might think that if you get 20 minutes on the phone with a rep, that's like amazing. Their longest conversation is like hours and hours because they want to do what's like really good for their customer so you know like 18 20 some hours on the phone with a with oh, a customer wow. trying to satisfy oh yeah, that's that's good that. yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's very I'm cool still with amazon yeah. Well, it's like I think they their culture is still very it's Zephonian, yeah. you know. So mm -hmm. yeah. my book is they put together a culture book every year to celebrate wow. everything that they do, whether it's you know, like their their values, their um, you know, like how they how they, you know, their all hands meetings, the things that they do for the community, the um, you know, it's yeah. it's, it's a truly amazing company. Yeah, I think so, when I so, heard about go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, when I was good. Heard... Okay. <laughs> so when I heard about them for the first time, I think um um maybe I think around like late early 2000, um they had a um they had a returns policy which was not dated, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken, mm -hmm. like you can return anytime. Um uh, I was like, wow, can you really do that? <laughs> yeah. Most of the written policy, I think, expire around ninety days. At those time, they had a they had a very longer um, written policy. Yeah, they're they're, they're very different. Um, I was going to just mention one thing from the uh, spiral dynamics. 
one of the principles that was called out was say a person, an individual or a group of people, they can't skip colors. So they can't move, say a company, maybe we'll, we'll use the same principle to say, you can't move a company from amber all the way to teal or even to green. They have to go through these stages, uh, mm -hmm. not because they have to, but in order for them to get there, they have to sort of experience the next stage to build up that readiness to go to the next stage. So let's say if, if, if you're working with a company that is solid orange, chances of them jump over to teal is going to be very low, right? It's, it will be very challenged to move them to green. Uh, that will be a huge success, but, but you probably wouldn't want to set moving them to teal as a goal mm -hmm. uh, in your interaction with them, right? So I think we're a little bit behind time. Let's just do this one quick exercise. I think this will be interesting to see where everybody is at in terms of what, what we just talked about, right? So in here, you all have you all should have a link to to this mural board. These are the twelve agile principles, right? It's simplified or shortened. Just feel free to go grab any of these and say, okay, if I were to put any of these uh, twelve principles in on this agility map, where would it be? Right? I think we we have enough people. Just feel free to grab a box. And then just put it where you think, based on your understanding of the introduction of this map, where do you think it should be? I'll give everybody three minutes. Well, I don't have a Moral account, so I think uh, oh. I'll try to join join when everyone is working on it. You you can um, just, the, I don't know if you saw in the chat, um, there is a link and this is an open board, so you should be able to go right yeah. in. I don't. It doesn't require a login. No. <laughs> no. You can, so you can just use it as a guest. There's a visitor guest. At the same time, Zoom has a special behavior that for late joiners, the chat is not available. So, yeah, yeah, I I just popped it in again. So if you want to try that link, you can. Yeah. You'll, it should take you right to it. So it's very interesting thought about that you cannot jump colors. I don't think that's what he's saying. I think it's why a lot of the agile transformations, and I can just jump in for one second. Um, I, I liked that we start with organizations that are all, totally command and control, that amber, that middle circle, and we try to move them to green and their mindset is not there, right? So what I interpreted KJ to say is, you got a CNC hardcore man to control. That's what I mean. First, you got to get them to agree. Okay, can we trust? Can we get some flexibility that the people who are doing the work know a little mm -hmm. bit of something? And 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 so you, it's a gradual, it's a progression. It's just like a baby learning to walk. You don't expect the baby to uh, four months to walk so i think that's that's that was my interpretation kj yeah, yeah. You're, you're you're right valerie yeah if it was a if it's a total amber company you don't want to introduce agile to that company you might want First, to introduce some elements of it to say hey let's you know try to focus on the results or something like that i always get the whole story we want to jump in but first, you need yeah. to get the whole story. What, why, yeah. what is going on with this organization, and why am I here? How am I going to add value? What are you looking for? Yep. Hey, it's interesting right. because uh, I heard uh, from. I, I don't claim I'm an expert in transformations, but I heard from Clay, Craig Larman, who is, you know, doing transformations for large companies and. He's kind of turning around companies that are in crisis and how he turns them, whatever state they are, it doesn't matter. He just uh, talks to CFO, talks to CEO, and you know they achieve the goal of moving to green. So uh, from this perspective, I'm thinking like, does Craig knows about, does Craig know about any kind of uh, types of 
you know, yellow and, and amber or whatever, or mm -hmm. it is really irrelevant. I mean, I still think they'd probably about... be making steps along the way. I don't think they're they're making that big jump. Um, he says it's okay. a ten year journey. When you talk no, no, no. I wanted I wanted to just make one more comment about what Vladimir saying. Uh, My fastest transformations. I went to work. Went to um, consult for a uh, cancer a company that did a cancer portal. All the results and all of that. And the team had crashed the portal. <laughs> the VP said, we don't care what you do. We don't care how you do it. If you want to do agile, well, we don't care what you call it. But right now we are in a mess. When people are in a crisis, you have more autonomy, more freedom. I heard you say your guy goes to people, to companies that are in crisis. Companies that are C&C and feeling like they're, they're doing well, are going to be a tougher sale than somebody um, who's in crisis. That's that's just my comment. It's been my experience, which is You're limited. Right. Well, because yeah. Craig Lerman is saying, mm -hmm. I cannot do nothing with this company that did not come to me. So yeah. <laughs> the ones that come to me are in crisis. Yeah, I ask yeah. him his. I ask him this question specifically. I say. Well, why do you come to the company? What do you say to them? And it's like, I never come to the company. <laughs> so, right. It's really useless. useless. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So just going back to this, three minutes are up. I see some of you are moving it, but didn't know. Some of you probably didn't know which color to put it in. I would say, most, like I said earlier, all agile practices, you can safely put it in green, at least based on my understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question uh, yeah, okay. go for a, an organization that's really large and, uh, you know, uh, trying to scale and at the same time riddled with dependencies. So think of an organization where you have hundreds and hundreds of teams and a lot of these teams uh, work uh, are supposed to work together in an interdependent fashion. Could mm -hmm. this tool be a uh, potentially used because obviously these organizations have tons and tons of data that's readily available, right? Like, I mean, you know, if, if I just, even if I think of our agile maturity um, um, survey, right, that we do every quarter, that itself has a wealth of data, but could, would this tool, how would you recommend that this tool be used for um, a situation like this? And I know this is a really loaded mm -hmm. question, um, any yeah. shots? Um, really <laughs> yeah, also without knowing all the details, uh, just in that scenario that you called out, uh, I think the first thing is probably do a brainstorming session with the right people, and you can use this tool as a way of facilitating that conversation. Things like, okay, we have a lot of dependencies, right? Is that a ag agile mechanics issue or is it an organizational issue? It's um, yeah, right. Right, and then and then start throwing your ideas out there, your thoughts, and and then you can organize them, and then you can step back and say, okay, do I see a pattern emerging from we, <laughs> what we just put out Love. there? Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. great. And then and then you can decide, okay, it's clear now. We need to address this issue first, and then the other one, the other one, and then you can use the map to track. What needs to happen next? Why that needs to happen? How does this speak to items in other quadrants and things like that? Right. Right. So, Thank you. Yeah, Sorry. You're welcome. That was yeah, very helpful. This, this is actually pretty good. Uh, as you can see, the 12 agile principles we all are very familiar with. It has a lot of uh, items in the agile mechanics, some product agility. Uh, some organizational agility items. And I will say biz dev work together is more of an organizational because usually the IT and the business are, um, you know, in different groups of organization, but feel free to put it there if you have a good rationale for it, especially in your situation. So, so this is more of a, just a quick exercise about how do you map the items on here, right? It's relatively simple. It has four quadrants. Um, four different colors and you can just throw them on there. It's it's okay if you didn't get it right the first time, but through conversations like Dave shared back and forth, you will gradually move to 
to, to a common understanding of where things are, right? Um, so given the time that we have left, I just wanna share one thing real quick in terms of visualize how you can use it, right? So, so this is um, more of a, okay, how in reality you could use it. So I have a little bit of a, uh, uh, Cheryl, can you follow me on there so they, people can see wh where I'm at, where I am? Yeah, I can oh, see. I can pull you. Oh, there, yeah. Ah. So, so in here, right, how do you do it? So this is a simple sort of legend of saying, okay, squares, you want to use transparent squares in mural because then it tells you what color it's in. So, so squares are where we are, right? If you do a current assessment, this is where we are. And based on that, you go, okay, we want to be here next. This is our next stop. You can use a circle to represent it and use a solid arrow to say, okay, we want to get from here to here. And the reason why we want to get here is because it helps us getting closer to this value-driven goal. So it could be a goal in business agility or product agility, but you don't just do agile things for its sake. You, it, there has to be some kind of value-driven goals you want to identify, right? Like Valerie, that, that you mentioned that a few times. And then, but this will be a dotted line because it's contributing to it. Uh, so this is a simple way of saying, okay, how you want to use this map. So if you look at what's mapped out here, right? Um, this is what I called out in, in the article that I wrote to say, okay, a uh, uh, agile coach or someone may come here and say, okay, our current state is we have healthy backlog, we have motivated scrum masters, that's good, but we, mo we, don't, we only have manual testing, right? That's mm. slowing us down. That's the current state. Um, and we have six month release cycles, our primary business goal is to, to re, uh, reduce, uh, spell that one around, IT costs, right? And our teams are organized based on components. So a database, we have a database team, we have a front end team, we have a design team, then we have a back end team and things like that. Uh, so this is our current state. And then the sort of the thought process, at least as an example is to say, okay, if we were, to get the right people in the room and look at it and say, okay, what should we do next? Where do we want to be next? And we want to start actually with the business agility goal, right? So we say, okay, our last year's um, primary business goal is to reduce costs. Now for the next year, given the environment, given the market, we feel we need to achieve a market share goal. Right, and that is a little bit orange, but it's all you can also call, call it green. Uh, you can put it in between things like that to say, okay, this is the goal for the whole company is to achieve that. Whether you're in IT, you're in sales, you're in marketing, you're in customer service, this is our goal, right? And then we can say, okay, from a product perspective, there could be many of these next steps in the product agility that you could put out there. But in this example, it's simplified. We just say, okay, we believe the hypothesis is if we were able to release our products, software products, let's say monthly, that will give our customers more, you know, sooner what they need. And in return, they're gonna buy our products more. And then that will help us increase our market share. So this becomes your product agility goal. So that basically means in, in a product product agility quadrant, you go, okay, here's where we are. We want to move to here, right? But how can we move to here? So we come back to agile mechanics. We say, okay, we want to do continuous integration. We want to do continuous delivery, just as a simple example. But how can we do that? There may be many other things, right? In this simple example, we say, okay, we really want to move from manual testing to automated functional testing. Maybe there are unit tests or many other things, pipelines, virtualization and all of that, right? But in this example, we say, okay, we, we say uh, in order to achieve uh, continuous integration, we want to move from manual testing only to some level of automated testing. This is the next step. By doing this, this will help 
move us closer to CICD, which will move us closer to monthly releases, right? Um, and then another way we want to do it is to simplify release approval process, because before we had six months to go through the paperwork. Now we only have four weeks. So we need to simplify it. And, and how can we actually get here, right? Uh, and then in here, we, we realize to say, okay, we want to empower teams to make decisions so that we can simplify the approval process, but that's an organizational decision, right? Management needs to, to truly find ways to empower teams, not just on a, on a PowerPoint deck somewhere, but things. <laughs> right? uh, so, so by this, uh, again, this is an overly simplified example, but this gives you sort of at least some way of thinking about how you could potentially use it in your organization is to say, let's map it out, right? Once it's mapped it out, you go, okay, for our next quarter, we want to focus on doing this or we want to focus on doing this, right? Um, and another way you could do it is to say, okay, we feel this has a greater impact and, or it, it takes more investment or, or it requires more effort. It's more urgent, it's more risky. You want to, just from a visual representation perspective, you want to make this bigger. You want to say, okay, from an agile practice perspective, this is our number one for the next quarter, right? So, so that way, whoever's looking at it will know, okay, this is number one. And then based on the size, you can make it, you can make it easier to, um, to talk to other people about it, right? Um, and, and at the end, I would just want to say the takeaways, right? And then we'll probably have five minutes for, for additional questions. Uh, remember the two principles, right? Sustainable agility is achieved by balance advance, advancements in all four quadrants. You don't want to get lopsided. You don't want to get imbalanced. In one. You want to make sure each quadrant has its corresponding items speaking to what you're trying to achieve next. And the second one is keep items in the same, in the same color circle because they synergize well, right? Um, and then just to, to, to reiterate, um, my intention of this tool is to make it a lightweight tool. It's in your toolbox, just like you would go on a hike, you will pull the, pull the map to find out where you are, where you want to be. After you walk for a couple of miles, you want to pull out your map again to see if you want to you know, have a detour or, or if you're still on track or you, maybe you want to change your destination just to, just to use it often. Uh, and then over time, you're, you're going to be more fluent in, in using this or use, using this to communicate. All right, so that's the introduction of Agility Map. Uh, we also have a LinkedIn group. Uh, maybe we will share that link in a minute here uh, on, on here. I'll try to find the link. So feel free to join that group. And we just not very active at this point, but as more people wanting to try it out, um, I'm hoping the group will be more active and we can share more experience and more more ideas about how to how to use this tool. All right, that's it for me. Good question. Um, what was what was your metaphor for orange? Uh, a well-oiled machine. Well-oiled machine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one question I have is I love the colors and the metaphors, but it's quite possible that there may be a bleed in the colors, right? You may be orange in some segments and you may be green in something else. What do you do yeah. in a situation like that? Well, th that's the reality, right? Usually you yeah. will have a primary color, right? In, in a company yeah. where 80%, 70% yeah. of company is in co on color, but it's yeah. starting to transition to the next color or, or regressing to, 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 to a different color. That's just the reality. The goal is to, is not necessarily to say, okay, we want everything in the same color um, as the only goal, um, but knowing where they are and what's the next piece that we want to move to the green color will help you identify that, right? Um, right. Is I mean, I guess I was, and I know this may not, I mean, I may be overthinking it, but I, I guess yeah. I was trying to say, I mean, what if you're between uh, orange and green, for instance, then what do you do? Because there are cases where you are. 
Yeah. I think most oh. companies are in that situation, right? Yep. Yep. Most companies are. I think most of the companies that we work for or work with are in that situation. Um, I think the what do you do is to you know in the context of this tool is to use this tool to identify what's the next thing. Where do you want to be next? Right. It could be a product agility improvement you want mm -hmm. to do, or it mm -hmm. could be a business agility or maybe th the reason things don't work that well is because we don't have the right organizational structure to support it or our culture is really not quite there right then you could decide you want to venture in to to really push for it right or you say we're not quite ready for this kind of uh progress we need to work on something else right by, by, by laying yeah. everything on the map that gives you a visual yeah. indication of thinking that through so you don't have to keep everything you know in your mind and sometimes yes. things get confusing right? yeah yes definitely it's a great conversation starter and you know i mean obviously it doesn't solve every pro problem that the organization will have no, but no, it definitely no. lays uh, them out uh, you know in a nice uh, pictorial fashion so thank you yeah you're welcome Oh. Go ahead. No, I was just saying this has been really, really interesting. Very, mm -hmm. very nice. And actually, when you zoomed out the um, tool, it looked 3D to me. And I was just kind of like, whoa, <laughs> I'm going to fall into that circle. So. Yeah. so, yeah. So, I think the, I'm going to move back to here, right? This will probably be 80% of the time you will see what if you were to try to give it a try this is what it will probably look like maybe you just have five times more items in here because you know you, the situation is more complex and then you can move things around trying to get consensus and help make sure people are understanding this the same way and all, and all of that right um, but Maybe you will find other creative ways of using this in your own application. That's where that's why I'm sharing this with everybody to say, I want to know when you look at this and when you're thinking about your own situation, how would you use it? Right? Uh, maybe you can think of ways that I, I never thought of to say, hey, you can this can be very useful in this situation. Right. Uh, so I'd love to uh, have you guys join that group. Uh, that LinkedIn group, and, and if you're willing to give it a try, if you're free to do that, or just message me on the group if you want to talk more. Like David, he, he dropped off earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually reached out to me after the, the talk, and he's like, I want to use it. Can I talk to you more? So we ended up spending several hours trying to design how to make it you know, useful for his situation, and he mm -hmm. went ahead and did it. So I'll be more than happy to, to spend the time to, to talk through those situations with you if you would like to give it a try you're so kind kj um i appreciate that and uh could you share with us please um maybe in your organization where you work right now um or maybe you're a consultant yeah. i'm not i'm not quite sure uh, um yeah I was I was consulting I consulted for a few years and now I, I settled. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm actually yeah uh, I'm with U.S. Bank right now. Uh, I oh, actually U.S. Bank. Okay. I was using this uh, with one of the organizations. Uh, I'm I'm actually coaching another coach uh, on how to help that particular organization. Uh, okay. and, and then you know I started using this with a coach and and the feedback that i got from that coach was yeah this really helps me think the whole not just one item right it helps me connect the dots basically mm -hmm. uh, so I, I found that could be useful for for maybe other people as well in that situation yeah, yeah right. I, go ahead no no go ahead Blah, blah. i apologize i just didn't finish my question uh so in oh, your sorry. position where, where you work right now us bank um mm -hmm. you 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 suggest that we use it uh, as a map and a hiking trail um which conversations 
did you have? I mean, what did you significant conversations you have uh, where you can see that it, it it made a significant difficult difference? And what kind of crowd was there? And what questions did they ask? Mm -hmm. So, so the way uh, I introduced sort of the angle I introduced it is um, so I suggested. Um, for the agile improvement effort, right? We want to walk the talk, meaning we want a agility backlog, just like a product team would. What areas are we trying to improve? Who are our, our customers? How do we prioritize things, right? And it became clear, it's just a list of things that people want to improve. But it's really hard to tell which one is more important or more urgent than the other, right? So, so I introduced this as a way of helping them understand the situation, and based on that, they can prioritize what agility improvement item they want to do, right? What's the top two items in the agility backlog for the next quarter? Um, so, so that's how one example of what I introduced it, and. I actually will, will be probably using this to talk to the organizational leaders uh, from an assessment perspective, right? We say, okay, um, you want to become more agile. Let's find out where we are right now. And then I can use this to represent, uh, to present the, the results of my assessment, right? Either through interviews, through surveys. I can put all the data on here and say, do you agree? This is where we are. If you don't, let's talk about it, right? And then from there, the next question is, where do you think we, we need to be next month, next two months, right? You, then you're starting to, after you walk through all those squares, you're starting, put, you're starting to put circles, the next step on this map. And there may be 10, 20 different options you could choose from. But then that's going to go, okay, do they synergize? Are we missing something? Are there gaps? So those are the type of conversation you could have with organizational leaders, even not from an agile perspective, just to say, what do we want to achieve, right? Even though each quadrant is agile or agility, but, but even without it, um, you could help them map it out. So that, that's one, another way you could use it. So uh, the outcomes of the assessment, right? Um, KJ, do you use them? So um, the improvement items go into the agility backlog. And then um, the team decides which one they want to pick up uh, for the implementation, probably for the next quarter or for the next month. And um, so that kind of planning, do they do it like, I want to do it for the next three quarters and this is my roadmap of what I want to do for the next three quarters with respect to the um, improvements. How frequent does that conversation happen? And um, is there a lot of volatility around the decisions that the team, um, you know, kind of like go back and forth. They, they want to implement one improvement and then after a few, few, you know, probably like after two or three weeks, they come back and say, no, I want to switch back to a different one. How do you handle uh, the flux in the uh, decision? I don't think the tool will help you solve that problem, but they may help you communicate it, right? Because uh, we don't want to zigzag. If we want to go somewhere, we want to find the shortest path to it, right? Unless we say this is not where we want to go, we don't want to zigzag, go, go backwards and go forward, go sideways, right? Um, and, and also, I don't, know, I don't know your situation that well, but, but I wouldn't just let the team decide what they want to improve next. I think the coach needs to guide them, right? To say, if you were to, uh, you know, you can guide them using questions, right? The team say, okay, we want to improve, uh, we want to improve our velocity, right? The coach will go, once you improved it, what happens? Like, what benefit are you getting from it, right? Mm -hmm. Is it because the manager said you need to improve your velocity? Or, or is it because you feel you have more potential as a team, you want to be able to try that out, right? Um, 
because there are many ways you could improve velocity, like we all know, uh, on paper, right? Um, so, so I think, well, I think uh, as a coach, right? I'm speaking from from the role of a coach. It, it is important to to really uh, challenge a lot of things people take for granted. Um, and then you could use this tool or not to to really make that point, right? Um, to say, okay, we we want to have Two week sprints, now we want to switch to three week sprints, and two months later we want to switch back. It's like, okay, let's let's talk. What were you trying to solve? Right? Is what you're trying to do really going to solve that problem that, that you're trying to solve? Half of the time it won't. Or or they're solving the wrong problem. Right. Um, maybe in that situation this cool, this tool can help a little, but I would I don't see this tool being sort of the the center of the conversation I mean, you might want to pull that in to make a point right uh, but maybe a lot of the dif difficult conversation still needs to happen um in order to, to get them to on the right track and, and part of this is also where you know managers come to play right come into play i mean if you're into the green zone headed into the green zone right part of the change from orange to green is getting mm -hmm. managers to be organizational coaches, right? Because mm -hmm. okay. while you might have an agile coach that's working with a series of teams, you know, as a as a leader uh, or, or a manager, your job is to improve the system. That is your fundamental job, right? So, mm -hmm. for instance, um, you know, you're you're helping the the reason the team would have items in a backlog they wish to pull from is to achieve these outcomes, right? These these goals that you've set for the organization, which is why, you know, earlier in the chat, I mentioned, you know, if you wanted to set a powerful goal, that would be getting to, and I'm not setting a date, but because it depends on where you are, but your, your ultimate goal for where development should be, should be to be able to deliver to a prod-like environment, you know, every hour, right? Multiple times a day. Just depending on the size of your org, and your own, and sometimes only your managers can really help you move through that sort of organizational morass, or or pull the handles, frankly, right? And they need to stop watching what the team doing is doing, but rather helping them get to that better place. Because a manager, many of them have the right background, right? So when you look at like uh, automated functional testing, as a great example on here. You know, that's at so many different levels. So you can help get people get perspective on where it's important and you should spend a lot of time versus where you want to spend a little bit of time and why. And you should always be able to map that why. Yeah, yeah. That's that, that I'm those goals for my yeah. org right now. Yeah. I mean we're we're working on that now. Awesome. I like Bill. Um, I think many times the managers are not sure how they can help. Mm -hmm. In that direction, the example you just gave is excellent. Yeah. You know, they, helping them to understand what their role is and how they can help the teams be empowered. Yeah, no, thank you. And and that's part, by the way, sorry to interrupt, but that the, 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 uh, sorry to interrupt you, Vlad, but to finish that thought, Valerie, um, yeah. it's you important did. because I think if you look in that lower right-hand corner, when you talk about business agility or in the lower left organizational agility, that's where higher level leaders come into play. I have that issue now. So all the, in my org, I, I have a few directors reporting to me and below them are about eight managers and I've got eight scrum masters. And so my goal is to now, we spent this year and we continue to educating the manager about their new role, right? Because they were developers, they become managers and all they've been ever told in the past and all they've ever seen are managers who own a team and they make sure that the output of that team is solid. And I was like, that is the least useful thing you can do here. <laughs> Shock. And I'm like, oh I'm like you make one team good. Great. I got 16 <laughs> teams. Like now, let's talk about how we get everybody together, how we improve communication, how we get our releases out faster, how we improve our quality. Right? And, and these, it sounds really easy to say, because trust me, this is so easy to say, but we've been spending the last six months looking through, oh yeah, it's it's super hard because you're you're helping them reimagine their role and see if they want to do it. Um, but also saying, uh, um, here's an opportunity for you to change the organization. And their eyes get really big, like, holy crap, like, how am I going to do that? <laughs> and that's the job of more senior leaders. Most senior leaders don't know this stuff mm -hmm. i happen to come through 
an unusual path. KJ actually knows me because I remember when his resume hit my desk about five years ago. And we pulled <laughs> the organization for a bit. So KJ worked in our in my agile coach. And then uh, and Aaron Eric and I have uh, crossed paths as well as Vlad and I. And, uh, and it's funny because you you don't run into leaders who actually understand, I think, the mm-hmm. orange and, and, and teal and how they, um, mm-hmm. their very actions guided, right? The questions they ask guide them. So. The illusion of control is strong with that one. Yes, right. <laughs> the the anti force. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and Bill, I think you brought up a really good point when we come to actually use this tool, right? I I, I had a sort of broad stroke on the four quadrants need to be balanced, but the organizational agility is the basis of pretty much everything because it includes the culture, the leader's mindset what's important for them. So that is the basis for pretty much everything on this map. Yeah, you can't you can't build a generative culture, which is required to get out towards Teal. Um, mm-hmm. If you don't do that, I totally agree, KJ. That's a great point. Yeah. Why a lot of transformations fail. Um, that was why I liked uh, what you said, KJ, about uh, skipping colors. We, we try to skip, we try to get there without having, you're having conversations, Bill, over and over, and it's going to take many, and it's going to take some members of the group and the manager group in, in, the, in that group saying, ah, oh, this works, and then it starts catching on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think actually people have to go through significant amounts of pain in order to actually change. Yeah. But well, let's, that's okay, the so let's face change, it. Right? It, it. Let's face it. I, I, I like driving older cars. So you come in and say, Val, let Agile be the Mercedes, okay? I'm like, mm, I don't need no Mercedes. I'm not paying all that money. Doesn't it cost $1,000 for the oil change? <laughs> that is what you're coming up against, right? We're you. I I think that was KJ. I can't remember. Might have been Raj. Somebody said, "Why? Why is that going to be good for me? If you drive a Mercedes car, they're going to let you drive it for free because they need the advertisement and they're looking for your demographic. So for the first two years, you're going to drive it free. Now my name. Hmm, yeah. yeah. Okay. What's in it for me? That old whiff them, that's an old, old, old school. But what's in it for me? How's it making my life better? Just because somebody tired you and told you you were my coach. How are we going to measure that success? This is how I'm going to use it. I say that over and over again. People jump in and start coaching. People jump in and start changing teams. Nobody has any idea why they're doing it. And, and what do they expect to happen? At the end of the, all these activities, you got to mm-hmm. reverse it. Yeah. Leader, leadership uh, training is usually the thing that's lacking. Mm-hmm. You know, the leaders exactly. think that leaders think that an agile transformation happens at the team level, and they yeah. don't realize they're part of it. Yeah, that's why yeah. I'm really interested in Bill and what he's doing with his leaders because that is mm-hmm. the gap. That, yeah. That's a big, huge gap, Cheryl. Mm-hmm. You're spot on. And there's even a gap above me as well. And that's the funny thing is because here I am. So I'm, I'm a, for those who don't know, so I'm a senior director over at Optum, which is a crappy title, but whatever. Um, so <laughs> it's just the worst title, good Lord. Uh, I can't tell me, I tell my mother and she goes, right, right, whatever. She's a doctor. She doesn't know these things. And uh, <laughs> So she does real things, but, uh, but it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, above me, when you get to my boss, uh, and this boss, uh, uh, my VP is this guy, Hamid, he gets it, but I can even see where he's constrained. Right. And so, and he and I, we, we talk, we share, we try and uh, sort of navigate around that, but you know, your comment about, uh, Cheryl, your comment about, uh, people seeing it at the team level. I've heard almost that same mm-hmm. statement from folks above my mm-hmm. boss. Right. Mm-hmm. And because, for instance, our CIO said, hey, you know, what is, I was trying to kind of get his attention, right? And he was new to the role. And I said, hey, I said, we need you. 
in this. We need you as a part of this. We need you. To, we wanted to bring him into less training actually with Craig Larman. Mm -hmm. And he said, ah, yeah, that's the tech stuff. That's really for the team. I said, no, it's broader than that. And he said, how so? And I said, well, it's uh, just really an organizational redesign. <laughs> so this is a complete, you know, complete organizational redesign underneath you within your organization. And he goes, oh, we didn't sign up for that. We just want to do Agile. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. it. That's what they yeah. always say. Yeah, it's, we have a, just, totally, just let the totally. teams do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we had an hour-long talk, and my boss just goes, man, he's like, uh, we got a lot to work on there. But, you know, it's it's our, it's our not an end constraint because being with an Optum, my CIO reports up to five more CIOs. So I, I've got... <laughs> Yeah, I got plenty of working space in there to, to influence. So. Yeah, but I mean, even even at Optum or any company, mm -hmm. like large publicly traded company, mm -hmm. right? It's, you're constrained you're by the system. You'll have at it. least an hour and a half. Oh, sure. Cheryl, you're off mute, by the way. Oh, yeah, I just noticed that. Oh, no worries, sorry. no worries. My daughter is just like, I want to go, I want to go. go. And I'm like, go sit down. Well, well, yeah, we're over time. Uh, so, so I would be curious, just, just to wrap this up, if you find yourself stuck in a conversation, right, you can't get a message through, you can't get them to really see it, you think how it should be, do you see maybe being, you visualize it first and then you use the, the map as a tool, would you give it a try or do you think that that worth a try maybe sometime in the future? I was just curious. And let me know. I'm, I'm gonna paste my LinkedIn link here. I, I I would love to hear your thoughts or your experience on using this, because um, I I believe there is some potential on um, people using this to really help them communicate or just to think things through. So Thank you, I love to to collect some some examples. That if you're brave enough to give it a try, uh, I'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's very valuable. You, and so kind of you to share a lot with us. And uh, uh, to the point of the Bill's point and Val's point uh, about why, because um, what I'm talking about, what, what I heard uh, Bill and Val were discussing is alignment and like how the managers answer the question, what is my part in it? Uh, so that why is important. So here we are seeing that the circles and quadrants with some values, but where do we put the reasons? I mean, where do we put those, um, you know, whys uh, on that quarter? And are, are they are they belong there? And where they belong? Do we actually put them all in green and say, our why is to, I don't know, being flexible or our value is being, uh, building a better culture or something like that and how that connects in the diagram. Well, so, yeah. are, are, you, are you referring to why as to why do we want to focus on this next? Or why as in more of a di diagnose why we're here or why this happened? Well, something that would provide the guidance so people can actually make decisions on their own without going to up to Bill and I say, Bill, what do I do next? <laughs> yeah, the the uh, I think I know what you're saying. Maybe if I were to interpret your question, because it's, it's a great question, Vlad. Is uh, um, I don't have the answer, but if if I'm interpreting it, I would say um, so those things that get you into the better, happier place, right? They have an underpinning of why. Like why why would you uh, want to pursue CICD? Like, what's the point right now? It, admittedly, it contributes to monthly releases. I'm following your chart here. And mm -hmm. uh, reduced release approval process. So really the monthly releases. So why the monthly releases? What is it that that gets you? Is that what you're asking, Vlad? Yeah. Um, sounds like we just need to follow the diagram lines and we end up in business agility. So business agility will contain all the whys. Um, not all of them so 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 think of so this is your this is your visibility right in my mind this is my interpretation from all our discussions in the presentation mm -hmm. i'm going to put 
up here, whatever I need for us to reference, right? So you, you might not want it that crowded. Maybe you want the whys on the outside. I'm pointing to, my, to the screen of the outside the circle. However you want to do that, but you need to capture it. So when you guys come back and revisit it and everybody wants to go all the way back to the beginning, you can say, hold on, here's what we aligned on. I think Dave, he's, he's gone, he's been gone, but they, they voted and he had an agile coaches. So you want to make sure people change when they know what's, uh, that they're all on the same page. They're not going to all be on the same page, but there's some alignment and we, it's going to be good, right? It's going to be good. So I would capture it wherever you guys decide. An idea might be, you know, you could have um, some of the circles or things on the outside so that the inside doesn't get too cluttered. I would, I, one of the things I like about it is that it's clean, right? And you can easily, when you're trying to get that visibility, you don't want it too cluttered. I can look right here with those squares and see there's four things in the orange and I can look quickly and see the biggest thing is the automated functional testing. It's the biggest circle. You just want to make it easy to see. Maybe you only put the why for the automated functional testing for the Great. most important thing. I will give you an example. Uh, what if some manager will come to somebody, I don't know, Stacy Peterson, who is uh, head of Agile, uh, I don't know, KJ, if you work for her or not, in her structure, <laughs> <I do. laughs> right? And, and, and she comes here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, is, is, that, is that true? You work in her structure, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So, and she says, well, let's put focus on organizing projects better and, make sure that we follow the timelines. Let's put this on the map. Where would you put it? And you will say, well, that's not agile. It doesn't fit the map. And she, she will say like, no, this is actually business agility that will give us more, you know, predictability with uh, our business, you know? And, you know, that could be arguments like that. So the question is like. I understand. Right? I got, so, it. I got it. I got it. So first of all, you're not gonna go up against her question. You're, and I, I know I'll probably make you nuts, but you're gonna say, why do you think that's important? Can you come join our group? That's right. So they can hear your perspective. Don't let her get you, because now you've got one mind talking to another mind and you don't need a group consensus on everything, but you guys have worked hard to get this alignment. So you've got to not let somebody come in and break all that work all apart. So you say, you know what? You got some, some different perspectives that we didn't think about. I know I sound real culty, forgive me. But you guys have some different perspectives that, you did, that we didn't think about. We're going to meet next Tuesday. We would love to have you. I'll uh, put, put you on the uh, agenda. And uh, we want to hear your perspective. And, but we want you to also hear ours. You can only come if it's going to be two ways. Yeah, and also to, to your original question, Vladimir, let's say in that example, right, project timeline, I would say in the product agility quadrant, all the PMP project-based practices are most likely going to be in the orange, right? All the product-driven kind of thinking and goals are going to be in green. If we say we want to make sure we're more predictable for project delivery, you can just put that in orange and say, okay, uh, but our business agility goals are in green. And our practice in product agility is in orange. Um, that will be a starting point to to have that conversation to say, okay, they won't synergize based on, you know, the, the two principles, then what do we do, right? Mm -hmm. But then you can ask that question to say, okay, is that going to directly contribute to your business agility? If so, how? Yeah, right? and, what are the know, different I, ways? That, go ahead, Bill. I was gonna say, I know we need to wrap it up. So I thought I'd throw in a quick summary because Cheryl, you, Cheryl, you need to get out the door. I could totally- Yeah, get, we need to let her in, sorry. So you Cheryl. guys can stay as long as you want. This is fabulous. I just have this child who is making me crazy. For yeah, me. you're right, we, 
Well, she looks like she's still waiting. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a child's job. Yeah, totally. <laughs> anyway but thank you all this has been fabulous and kj i can't thank you enough and i'm gonna leave but keep on keeping on as long as you need to so thank you thank you for right. 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 holidays right. everyone yeah i think kj you make, you, you make a, a really good point because not just the the um there's not just where those kind of practices reside but also um Something to keep people sane is you should probably have a boundary conditioning, not knowing how far you can go. Uh, because earlier, like Raj, you know, you mentioned the less than safe. So safe is designed to never really let you get much into the green, let alone mm -hmm. you can't get into mm -hmm. teal being mm -hmm. safe if possible. That's right. Mm -hmm. So so and it's inherently structured that way, which isn't an evil thing. It's just it's a known limitation, right? So um it's a so codification we, of orange, dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and I think the, the key is there. So if you're in an environment like that, also don't emotionally kill yourself to try and go all the way if you can't, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so Bill, Bill, my problem is that... Well, I, it, it works just fine for us and um, it really doesn't go. It, we are seeing the, you're seeing the value. And uh, so, so, so I didn't hear the first bit. I'm sorry, I apologize. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it, it, so... it works for us and uh, it definitely we are able to see the value and the engineering practices that um, so that's the the uh, what I really appreciate. Um, I've been in Agile since 2008, right? So I have worked in uh, my I was work, my first project was with Best Buy. And um, so I'm, I also later on become a Scrum Master. And I also, I'm, I'm recently, uh, not recently, probably I would say like for the last three years, um, we are using Scaled Agile, not in Best Buy, but with a different customer. Mm -hmm. um, so I can, so I, I mean, like, um, to me, I think uh, the time to market and um, optimization of um, effect um, and uh, bringing in engineering practices, since all those are built in, as part of the um, scaled agile framework, mm -hmm. it becomes um, relatively easier for us to um, you know, it, uh, implement and go forward with it. Yeah, an interesting thing to think about though is this, which is, and I, I agree, I think if you're getting from orange and you're trying to get out, out, out you know, br broadening out, right? It can certainly get you there. I think the, what I mentioned earlier with the inherent limitations, right? Is that there's so much, uh structure so mm -hmm. much overhead and so many rules and safe itself if you start removing the rules breaks right it inherently breaks it's i mean i'm, I'm certified and safe I, you know, I've, I've sat through the thing i know it. i, I am know. too but, well, I have, but I'm when you totally pull, hear what you're saying i'm here yeah, when it, when, yeah, so when you, yeah so i'm saying but so when you when you pull out pieces of it it breaks but the inherent nature of getting out towards the outer edge of green is that you descale an environment scale is inherently wasteful and evil right i mean it, from this perspective because scale when you scale upwards right you're automatically baking in hierarchy you're automatically mm -hmm. baking in handoffs decision mm -hmm. latency cues right and you remove yourself from the customer right you grow the distance between yourself mm -hmm. and the customer which is why um in fact it's why when uh, safe said it was using scrum they had to create their own version of scrum because they were incapable of doing basic scrum right because but, they had in all that so other I, stuff here's my that's why, that's why that's right. yeah. so, so, <laughs> so I, I think the, the whole safe uh topic can, can go on for hours <laughs> yep. um, absolutely so, so, so one, one thing, i just want to call out one observation uh with your conversation here bill you mentioned the word decentralization right if you look at the colors from the center to to the outer edge this is the progress of decentralization so in amber one person in the organization on the top makes all the decisions mm -hmm. and in orange that's a little bit more decentralized than amber and green is more decentralized and teal is more decentralized. So, so if you want to move uh, outward, right, the, the sort of the theme is decentralization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
right but yeah ex exactly no that's exactly it right that's the whole point of like Bert's org the Bert's org you know uh, uh case study is fantastic and I was glad you mentioned it it's you read that and it's very powerful but they've done it you know and they've done similar things in other organizations and when you see that reflected it's interesting it's why um even though these are not teal organizations but when you look at it when you look at a Netflix or an Amazon or a, a Google or frankly any digital native company they're actually inherently decentralized because they're so uh, customer focused and mm -hmm. so focused on trying to get the people who do the work to be able to be, I don't like to say empowered, but fully a bit, fully able to do their entire job <laughs> and, and not worried about those other things. Um, <laughs> that's where they get out, right? They get, they get out to the outer end of that green. And it's because of that, that descaled nature, right? You've eliminated mm -hmm. Well, you're, you're, you're essentially inverting the direction to support sort of thing, right? So I want to push uh, decision making out to the edge um, where that point of interaction happens. That's where a lot of that customer knowledge is, right? So I think that's, that's part of where when you start pushing decision making up to a central authority, that's, that's fundamentally less effective. Mm -hmm. from an but, 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 but. What I loved about KJ's example, I'm going to copy it, KJ, when I coach, is that's the first time that I heard a positive example for um, the, the command and control. Um, and I said, I was going to copy it. I'm trying to remember what, okay, was it the, was it the Army? It was, it was that, yeah. oh, if there was an emergency and you want to be safe, the family, no, you don't want to be running around trying to figure out, getting together as a group, trying to figure out what you're going to do so that, you know, I'm in Houston. I'm not far from you. You're in Dallas. Um, trying to figure out how are we going to not drown in the floodwaters, right? You you want okay. to already have who's going to be in charge, what's this going to do, da, 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 da. I think that's really important because a lot of times as coaches, we go in and what we're saying right now is how we all feel and what we believe. It is not what they feel no. or believe yet. Yet. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the environment and the conditions dictates which color is the best color in that situation. Yeah. Uh, teal is not always more you know, superior than amber. It, it all depends on the environment and the conditions around it. So, yeah. yeah, I, I like follow. that. Yeah. We we don't right. usually we don't usually have favorable or um, positive examples for the amber, and I think, you know, since we're not trying to say one is better than the other, even though we we inherently believe it, we've seen it. Um, I think the nursing example is great. Like they out outdid anyone else. Um, just having a positive spin on it is helpful. Yeah, I, I'm so grateful that you guys stayed so late. We're half an hour over. So thank oh, you wow. so much for, uh, <laughs> for, for staying late. Um, thank you for your interest. And again, uh, reach out to me if you want to talk more about it. Um, and you know, uh, I'd love to, to, to hear your other thoughts or prepare you for using this in, in, your, in your organization. So. Uh, everybody be sure to be sure to come back next month january 19th at 5 p.m to okay. hear about project to product okay that's good awesome, nice. awesome. thank you so awesome. much thanks everyone thank you everybody right. thank you bye thanks, everybody bye. Bye. Good to see you dude stay in touch good to see you yep. good to see everybody